Welcome to the San Ramon Valley United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Muntu. I'm here with our youngest daughter today who's helping me out as we welcome all of you into your virtual space, wherever that is, whether that is in your kitchen like us, or that's in your living room, or maybe you're going hiking. Or on, if you're outside in your bench or garden. There you go, those are all good places to be welcome with each other. And so we're also going to ask you at this point to pass the peace. So you can type that in uh, wherever you are and offer that to one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hello friends, and as we continue with worship, just wanted to encourage you, wherever you are in your life right now, whether you are like the Joshis and you are trying to get through the first couple of weeks of school in this virtual format, um, whether you are dealing with some other crises that has come up in your family, know that you are loved, uh, know that uh, there are so many who are praying for you, uh, caring about you. Please know that you are not alone. And if you are feeling discouraged, if you are feeling like you just don't have what it takes to get through whatever it is you're facing this week, uh, hear this. You got this. And God's got you. We are continuing our series this morning as we continue through the letter of Paul to the Philippians. And we're going to continue to ponder how it is that he can be going through all of this challenge and yet still have this optimistic, hopeful uh, way of embracing what is happening for both himself and the people in Philippi. So let us continue to share and worship together as we sing, I want Jesus to walk. i 
only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that when I see you, or I'm absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel. The word of God for the people of God. We are in my kitchen, and the kiddo is upstairs watching PBS Kids, and we have just enough time to share a cup of coffee. So for today's message, I want to hang out with you and begin by sharing one of, well, our most embarrassing life moments. This was actually before kids. Uh, we were in a place called Typhoon Lagoon or something like that. It was the name of it and <clears throat> One of the many theme parks at Disney World and Heidi and I had decided to check out the wave pool Now wave pool was just like a, a real beach only the water was full of chlorine and the waves were generated out of some kind of machine and came without any breaks, right and children were body surfing and laughing in the shallow end. And we swam a little ways in and suddenly found ourselves drifting further into the deep end of the wave machine, caught in a current. And neither one of us is, are strong swimmers. We tried to swim out, but the tide was too great. And we were sif simply drifting further out. And after 15 minutes, I was getting tired and I just decided to ask for help. And I looked up at the lifeguard who was up on the side, about 30 feet up. And I just said, I think we might need a little help here. And of course, I thought that they might give us a little pole or a flotation device. A little did I know that the world would suddenly stop. A whistle was blown and immediately the gargantuan waves went still. And all 600 or so people were asked on a loudspeaker to please leave the pool. And the lifeguard jumped in to assist us. Of course, by that time, I had stopped thinking about our uh, imminent demise and tried to figure out ways to downplay our part in closing down the wave pool. Suffice it to say, there was no way that was going to be possible. Have you felt lately like you have been hit by wave after wave? So much so that you just wish for someone to please turn off the wave pool? Paul, in this letter to the Philippians, has been hit wave after wave of misfortune. You would think in his letter he would talk about how light, hard life had been. After all, in Philippi, not too long back, he was whipped within an inch of his life. And we know from Roman prisons at that time, uh, most likely when he was in Philippi with Silas, uh, they were held in wooden uh, stocks. Um, there were also stone ones, so it could have been stone. So his legs were in these stocks and spread apart uncomfortably, right? And he probably was also chained to the wall. And now in prison, <clears throat> uh, in Rome, he's a little bit more comfortable now. He's under house arrest, but he's not sure whether he'll be executed. And the church in Philippi, meantime is really going through it as persecution ramps up but somehow Paul acts as if the wave pool has been turned off he writes as if the Roman Empire those guards around his house all of it doesn't have any power so what are the waves that are hitting you today are there waves of loneliness missing those grandchildren. Uh, if you're a college student, are you missing having classes in real time, and getting a chance to socialize? If you're a parent right now, are you like me and you're just scrambling to help your kids to get set up with this virtual school uh, or homeschooling? Especially if they're younger, uh, it is a scramble right now. And it seems like every school has their different way of doing things. If you're in high school, you might be missing your sports team and all the things that you had dreamed of for these important years of your life. And for some right now, it's going through a health crisis. 
uh, may have nothing to do with COVID-19 or other issues, but because of all these other factors and pressures on the medical system, it just feels like it takes so much effort just to go through the motions. And some of us, of course, this week are getting hit wave by wave with uh, the fires, um, seeing the smoke in the air, those 10,000 or more lightning strikes that led to more than several hundred fires. For some right now, the waves might be because the world has just become too still. It's just you and all of your regrets. For some, the waves are just plain annoyance whenever you hear the word unprecedented, historic, new normal, when you really just want to hear, come back, it's over. Well, unfortunately, we can't turn off the wave machine right now, but we do have a lifeguard in all this. We have what Paul had in that prison. We have a God who through Jesus knows what it is to suffer and who has the ability to blow the whistle and calm the waves of anxiety. We have a God who holds us and says, you got this and I've got you. So what do we need to do to turn the wave pool off right now? Remember this, A-S-K. Ask. A is for, we've got to ask for help, right? Ask and reach out. So if you are drowning in something, please don't go through it alone. Talk to someone uh, in your small group. Uh, if you're not in a small group, join one. Just don't be alone right now. Look to the edge of the pool and say, I need help. And, and I get it there. It is embarrassing sometimes to ask for help but there are these lifeguards all around us. For some of us, those waves that are coming are the pressures to return to old addictions or temptations and all those rationalizations that are just churning in our minds. Just reach out. Please don't travel through this alone. So A is for ask. S is seek God through this. Seek God through this. Um, don't try and swim yourself out of the wave pool. You're likely to drown and get overwhelmed. Ask for God's power. And I tell you, it's, it's like having the waves turned off. When I pray uh, for help to get through these Zoom lessons with my daughter, trying to figure out Seesaw and Google Classroom and all these things that just feel so overwhelming, and I pray about it, and it's just like those, the wave machine just stops. And I'm surprised at how quickly things get easier. And finally, K is for keep enjoying. Keep enjoying what you can. Paul often wrote about how being imprisoned actually helped him. Uh, while he was trapped in Rome, he actually had access to Caesar's household and that base of power. Uh, there were key people that he was able to engage with. So ask yourself this question. Uh, what is now possible that was not possible before? Right? Who can I help that I couldn't help before? How does your loss help you support others who are going through the same thing? You know, we've got uh, a neighborhood where, at least on our street, no one ever talked to each other. And it was the most surreal thing to move into. And we were so used to the neighbors having these close connections. And I realized uh, as we came in, um, even though I was a new guy on the block, uh, because of the pandemic, it kind of gave an, a window, an opening to connect with other neighbors uh, through email and, and through just dropping some, some notes of care. And it gave us a purpose and a reason to be connected to each other. Um, it's important to have those connections. Paul says, I know, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for faith of the gospel. We're not alone in this. Ask for what you need. 
seek God through this and keep enjoying what you can. You've got this. God's got you. So I want to close with this rewriting I did in my prayer time a few months back. Uh, I was listening to the song, It Is Well With My Soul. You probably know it. Uh, Horatio Spafford uh, famously wrote it after he found out that his children were lost at sea. And his spouse wrote to him, and he wrote the phrase, when sorrows like sea billows roll. And I just kept thinking about that, those waves of grief that he must have been experiencing. And each time a wave comes, it's counteracted with this stillness that says, it is well with my soul. And for my own self-being, um, I wrote out those lyrics and I began to write my own lyrics for his song. And I'd like to close by sharing with you those lyrics uh, that I wrote during my prayer time. When children miss classrooms and screens bridge absent friends, when loved ones are sheltered away, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. When passions and pundits push common sense away, when feel like a stone starts to roll as the curve turns for the best or the worst it is well it is well with my soul when are lonely and breathing is held tight when death comes a thief in the night hard questions unanswered leave hearts in despair even so it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well, it is well with my soul. When grocers and doctors save lives in different ways, when neighbor knows neighbor again, when strangers are friends, though we can't see the end, it is well, it is well with my soul. God be with you. Wherever the sea billows roll, 
in your life right now. You've got this, and God's got you. Amen. Tell you about chapter four. The Lord he visited among the poor. My God is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. My God is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in a time of storm. One of the ways we practice our faith together is by praying for one another. Here are some of the concerns that are part of our community this week. We pray for all firefighters, and among them is a member of this community, Corin Drake. Corin and his colleagues have been putting in long days and long nights to keep all of us safe. We hold them and their families in our prayers. Prayers for Joan and Dave Webb and their family, as Joan is now receiving hospice care. Wrap loving arms around each of them as they enter this part of the journey together. Jane Lang's mom, Pat Baker, has been hospitalized several times this summer with ongoing health concerns. Prayers for the family as they care for her. Longtime and much loved church member, Pat Schoner, passed on last month in July. We give thanks for his life and for all that he will forever mean to us. May God hold him and his family in peace. We pray for all those receiving cancer treatment. On the challenging days, hold them tenderly. And as they anticipate the next treatment, grant each of them strength, hope, and healing. Join me now in a pastoral prayer to be followed by the Lord's Prayer. God, divine love comes to you, is present with you now, wherever you are. 
and the message from God always is, peace be with you. The gift of peace is not dependent on what is happening around you or what is raging within you. Allow that deep peace from God to surround you, embrace you, and protect you. With all your imperfections and weaknesses, you are a perfect vessel for this peace. Receive it. Let it become you. And go into the world to be that peace in the midst of the fires and fears that are raging. We show up ready to know that God is with us as together we pray the prayer that celebrates God's presence, God's peace here on earth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you have been enriched by this worship service or by the activities and ministries of this church, I invite you to give to the church and support our efforts. There is on the slide in front of you a QR code that you're welcome to take a picture of or to follow the directions to our webpage. There are so many ways to live our faith, to give of ourselves generously, and I'm thankful for all the ways that you do that. May the joy of giving fill your lives with peace and your heart with joy.
God of all power and grace, we have often been overwhelmed by the indifference of the world and have let it discourage us from the work of disciple making to which you've called us. As we give our tithes and offerings, may we do so with the confidence of victors, knowing that in your love, grace, and compassion, you will have the last word. We pray this in the name of your Son, who bore our sins. Amen. There are a couple of announcements that shape our community life together. And one is that next week on August 30th, we will continue our regular live stream service at 9 a.m. and we'll offer an outdoor service at 1015 with limited seating. So I wanna set some expectations for that outdoor service. To attend, please register by responding to an email that went out earlier this week and you can call the church office if you would like to be on that email list for future services. 40 people can attend, and so you need to sign up ahead of time. There will also be a waiver to sign. In accordance with county and church conference guidelines, we will all wear masks for the entire service, and you will be guided to one church entrance and seated in compliance with social distancing requirements. All who attend are welcome to hum to the music, yet we will not be singing. Once worship is over, you will be escorted out one group at a time. And I know this will be different, so I want you to have a sense of what we are doing so that you feel welcomed and that we keep everyone safe. We also have an opportunity to serve the broader community this week. This is a week to drop off healthy food items for the Monument Crisis Back to School Drive. There's information on our website, srvumc.org. Just scroll all the way down to almost the bottom of that opening page, and you can click on Monument Crisis Center Back to School Drive. And now we stand and we sing and we celebrate that God is with us. Amen. Lord, take my hand, lead me on. 
Receive now this benediction. You got this. And God's got you. Remember, ask for the help that you need. Don't do this alone. Seek God. Seek God through all of this. And keep enjoying the things you can. Go in peace. It's my daughter. Amen.